Good day everyone. Today I am gonna talking about Erlenmeyer flask deformity. Actually, I am enthusiastic to start this presentation, so let's go. The learning objectives from this that presentation. First, what is the meaning of Erlenmeyer flask deformity? Second, differential diagnosis of Erlenmeyer flask deformity and how to differentiate causes from each other at the end, summary and conclusion. Similar finding, but different diagnosis. As we see, all these uh, radiograph showing the same finding of flask deformity, flask shape, uh, tpa and femur, however, have different diagnosis, uh, as this uh, film for lead poisoning case, and that one of hereditary multiple exostosis this one and that one for osteopetrosis, diffuse osteosclerosis as we see with Erlenmeyer flask deformity and that one of pile disease also this one for thalassemia measure showing the broadening of the metaphysis and the narrowing of the diaphysis which is called Erlenmeyer flask deformity. First, what is the meaning of Erlenmeyer flask deformity? Erlenmeyer flask deformity meaning the bone appeared abnormal with deformity like this wide neck flask. The first one describing this is the German chemist Emil Erlenmeyer, as we see in that picture. So, what is the differential diagnosis of Erlenmeyer flask deformity? Lead genome can Remember the two mnemonic words as a mnemonic word for remembering the causing of the Erlenmeyer flask deformity. Lead from lead poisoning, G from Gaucher disease, N from Neman Peck disease, O from osteopetrosis and osteochondromatosis, M from metaphyseal dysplasia like pile disease, and the cranial metaphyseal dysplasia when associated with cranial nerve policy or abnormality, E from hematological, which he meaning hematological, like thalassemia, major or thalassemia, or other blood disease. Again, these diagrams showing the lead genome, which is the mnemonic word to remember the causes of the Erlenmeyer flask deformity, lead poisoning, Gaucher disease, Nemanbeck, osteopetrosis, osteochondromatosis, metaphyseal dysplasia, craniometaphyseal dysplasia, and hematological like thalassemia. Okay, now can you, we start by some scenarios to discriminate and understand the differential diagnosis and discriminating them from each other, which is causing Erlenmeyer flask deformity. Scenario one, this frontal radiograph for a leg, which is showing Erlenmeyer flask deformity, broadening and widening of the metaphysis with narrowing and constriction of the diaphysis, which is called Erlenmeyer flask deformity. Second step, we should know what is the pathology or diseases or syndromes which can cause disease deformity, Erlenmeyer flask deformity, and you can remember the by the lead genome mnemonic word. Then we should look for other radiological, laboratory, or clinical concomitant finding on the film or in the laboratory. So the diagnosis of this is osteopetrosis because there are osteosclerosis diffuse in all the bone examined associated with Erlenmeyer flask deformity. This pathology is autosomal dominant in adult with diffuse osteosclerosis as we see in the film here. Defective osteoclast dysfunctions with failures of proper reabsorption produces this sclerosis. Vertebral in the blades sclerosis, which is called sandwich vertebra, other finding or sign which can discriminate this pathology. Fragile pretal bone with recurrent fractures. Cranial nerve policy if there are sclerosis in the skull base. 
bone within bone appearance, another feature for the osteopetrosis, ernial myofascial flask deformity as we see in our case and our presentations due to lack of tubulizations and failure of ends. The other name of osteopetrosis is Alpers Scomberg disease or marble bone disease due to brittle bone which uh, recurrent fractures due to this osteosclerosis and defective in osteoclast function. So the answer one is osteopetrosis due to diffuse osteosclerosis and Erlenmeyer flask deformity. Scenario two, this abnormality or this deformity in the frontal radiograph of both knees showing broadening and flaring of the metaphysis of the both femur and also both tibia and fibula associated with narrowing of the diaphysis which is called Erlenmeyer flask deformity. This film is also associated with this bony exostosis which appeared away from the joints and they have cortex and medulla. So due to Erlenmeyer flask deformity we can go on to the differential diagnosis of Erlenmeyer flask deformity, let genome and pick up one from the differential diagnosis according to the features on the film. Lip poisoning, Usher disease, nemampic, osteopetrosis, osteochondromatosis, metaphysial dysplasia or craniometaphysial or hematological. This was a case of osteochondromatosis or the physial ecclesia and this uh, can be confirmed by looking for the radiological, laboratory or clinical concomitant finding. The pathology is autosomal dominant condition also characterized by the development of multiple osteochondromatosis, so it's called osteochondromatosis. Patients may be asymptomatic or may be significantly deformed. The complications of these osteochondromas can be compressed in the vessels causing vascular impingement or neural impingement, can cause fractures, bursitis, deformity, and malignant transformations in little bit 1 to 2 percent of the pathology. The other name of osteochondromatosis is the physial ecclesis. So the answer of this case or this scenario is the physial ecclesis or hereditary multiple exostosis as a cause for Erlenmeyer flask deformity. Another scenario with Erlenmeyer flask deformity with broadening of the metaphysis of both femur and both tibia and narrowing of the diaphysis. Here there are some lucency in the metaphysis comparing with sclerosis and highly constrictions of the diaphysis. First, this pathology is Erlenmeyer flask deformity. So the differential diagnosis of it is lead genome and they can pick up one from the differential diagnosis according what according the other concomitant radiological finding on the film, laboratory finding or clinical finding. This was a case of metaphysial dysplasia which is called pial disease and the other concomitant finding is autosomal recessive conditions, flaring and leucency of the metaphysis as we see here this is leucency of the metaphysis associated with relative constriction and the sclerosis of the central portions of the diaphysis, like we see the shaft here. Asymptomatic and the genuvalgus deformity is often a feature. Craniometaphysial dysplasia essentially has the same features of metaphysial associated with uh, paresis of the cranial nerves. The other name of the metaphysial dysplasia is bile disease. And the diagnosis or answer of scenario 3 is bile disease due to flaring and lucency of the metaphysis associated with constriction and sclerosis of the diaphysis of the shafts. Scenario 4, Erlenmeyer flask deformity due to narrowing of the shaft and widening and flaring of the metaphysis. However, here there are also a lot of lucencies at the left 
diametaphyseal aspect of the femur associated with little bit periosteal reactions which is confirmed by stair film here by high signal in the periosteal region and also there are high signal stair of the marrow also low signal in T1 these images for the same patient two years ago still there are high signal in the medulla of the femur and also low signal in T1 due to early Meyer flask deformity I can go to the differential diagnosis of early Meyer flask deformity which is lead genome this is lead genome I can pick up one from this differential diagnosis according to the radiological or laboratory or clinical finding on the film or in the history of the patient so this was a gaucher disease the gaucher disease showing early Meyer flask deformity like this widening and deflaring of the metaphysis associated with uh, constrictions and the narrowing of the shafts to form this early Meyer flask the other uh, laboratory radiological or clinical findings is diffuse osteopenia due to gusher cell infiltrations it can cause also a vascular necrosis due to increased intraosseous pressure due to infiltrations leading to vascular occlusion common among Ashkenazi Jews associated also with hepatospinulomegaly due to lipid storage disease so the answer for is Gusher disease and this is a pathology looks like osteomyelitis however the due to persistent of the pathology in more than two years and also the laboratory finding confirm absent of the osteomyelitis it was the Gusher disease due to infiltrations of Gusher cells in the marrow scenario 5 this frontal and lateral radiograph of the knee which is showing coarse trabeculation of the bone however there are also widening and deflaring of the metaphysis here and in the tibia also with narrowing of the shaft which is forming the early Meyer flask deformity so if we go to the lead genome lead poisoning, Gusher disease, nemampic, osteopetrosis, osteochondromatosis, metaphyseal dysplasia, cranium metaphyseals, and hematological. I can pick one according to the other concomitant finding. Look for other concomitant finding like radiological laboratory or clinical associated in the film or in the lab. This was an hematological cause for the early Meyer-Flask deformity. Hematological cause associated with coarsened trabeculations producing cobweb appearance as we see the cobweb in the distal femur and the tibia also cobweb and trabeculations marrow hyperplasia and expansion due to extramedullary hematopoiosis arthropathy and chondrocalcinosis also can be detected as a result of hemochromatosis secondary to hypertransfusions because these hematological patient have uh, hypertransfusion history in the skull there are hair on end appearance obliterations of the paranasal sinus except ethmoid sinus due to marrow hyperplasia another feature the four hematological cause like thalassemia or sickle cell pathospilunomegaly cardiomegaly due to anemia biconcave vertebra bone within bone appearance all these features the four hematological cause Hematological here meaning hematological, but to remember in the mnemonic word of the lead genome, we called it hematologic. So the answer five is the thalassemia major. Thalassemia measures have cobweb trapeculations of the medulla and the Erlen Meyer flask deformity. The last scenario is scenario six, is this Erlen Meyer flask deformity associated with another feature here which is called metaphyseal dense band however there are early Meyer due to widening and deflaring of the metaphysis and narrowing of the shaft which are forming this early Meyer the differential diagnosis lead genome and the CAMPIC1 according to the 
other concomitant finding as we see in our case there are dense metaphysial band which raise the possibility of lead poisoning so this was a case of lead poisoning due to this dense metaphysial band need to be confirmed by other laboratory and clinical finding the lead poisoning appeared as dense metaphysial bands may show bone in bone appearance prolonged ingestions or inhalations of lead containing materials like contaminated waters, paints, batteries and the laboratory finding here is serum lead level more than 1.2 micromole by liter the other name of lead poisoning is plumpism so answer 6 is the uh, cause of this Erlenmeyer flask deformity is lead poisoning due to this dense metaphysial band so to summarize the Erlenmeyer flask deformity looks like this wide neck flask abnormality in the long bones and the causes and differential diagnosis of it can be remembered by this mnemonic word lead genome Lead poisoning have dense metaphysial band. G from Gaucher disease have diffuse osteopenia and a vascular necrosis as well as hepatosplenomegaly. Name and pick like Gaucher disease, however, it have no vascular necrosis. It is one from lipidosis. Osteopetrosis have diffuse sclerosis, bonus and bone appearance, sandwich vertebra. Osteochondromatosis have multiple osteochondromatomas arising uh, around the joint and causing broadening of the metaphysis metaphysial dysplasia or pile disease associated with sclerosis of the shaft with lucency of the metaphysis in Erlenmeyer Meyer flask craniometaphysial like metaphysial associated with cranial nerve bolises due to narrowing and sclerosis of the base of the skull and the cranial foramina hematological like thalassemia major is also can be considered a cause of lead genome associated with cobweb appearance and trabeculations of the medulla at the end this is my reference thank you very much and have a nice